All right, welcome to the Good Friday Otellini Cucini. We're going to have some fun tonight because this is just what we call a, a one sheet dinner or a, a sheet pan dinner, but it's a sheet pan Good Friday. So we're starting off with obviously before we get going, we're talking about a little classic Campari spritz. Campari spritz, the perfect spritz is one third Campari, one third white wine, one third soda, and a lemon with an olive. That makes it really good. This one got everything but the olive, but I added a couple of extra little things. We add, added the little, hold on here. This is a sweet little addition, the little Pellegrino Arinciata. You add that into it, and you get a little extra juice out of it. So what's Good Friday? Good Friday, fish. It's Fish Friday, although we do eat a lot of fish anyway. This one's kind of special, so come on in and take a peek at this. What we've got is a big hunk of two-pound salmon, good Atlantic salmon. We've got big shrimp. I think they're 10 to 15 size-wise. When you see 10, 15, that means 10 to 15 per pound. I uh, let them hang out for a little while in some real good extra virgin olive oil, some big hunks of garlic. And, uh, and I put this little tiny bit of vinegar barbecue sauce that I get at Beechwood Barbecue that's just mm, hard to beat. Hunk of salmon. We've got smashed potatoes. Smashed potatoes are, are real. Ah, we eat a lot, of those, a lot of those at home here because they're cool. What you do, a little bit of cheating. You can boil them to get them soft or you can just zap them in the microwave for just a second. And when you do, you let them cool, they come out and it's just your potato. You put them between the palm of your hand, each palm, and you press gently, not hard. You can feel it, you can feel it cracking, cracking, cracking. And it comes out where it starts to open up like this. And so when you normally fry them in some olive oil and garlic, all the edges get super crispy and it's an amazing potato. Tonight, we've got it on high, probably 425, and we're actually going to let them roast like that. I think they'll probably get pretty crispy just like that. The shrimp will roast along fine. And then we've got this beautiful, beautiful Brussels sprout. You cut these Brussels sprouts in half. I put them in a bowl and like this with garlic and anchovy and olive oil. You toss those in that after you've cut them in half. And I sauteed those for a few minutes just to get them a little bit ahead of the game because they could take a little while. So I sauteed them in there and then put them on the grand pan in here. Now, one of the really crazy things that we're doing tonight, I've never done this one actually before, but so hold on, let's see how it works. Underneath here, you can't quite see it, I've got one of these. What this is is polenta. And so we've made a polenta pie that we're cooking the actual Brussels sprouts on top of. And it should get crispy, it should get tasty. Polenta is a beautiful thing, it's just gonna add to it. If it doesn't work, God bless it, we'll figure out something else to do with it. But we're gonna slide this guy in here too because it's like a little cornmeal pizza pie. Slide him in there so we have something to nibble on. So all of this goes in. This is probably only gonna cook for about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Roasty, toasty, anchovy. Oh, did I tell you that we tossed these with anchovies and garlic and olive oil? No, you didn't. You should never, ever, ever cook a single vegetable without anchovies. It's the salt of Italy. It adds a saltiness to it, but it adds a depth to it that you don't get out of standard white salt. Kosher salt, certainly better. Coarse kosher salt, even better. Anchovy, absolutely perfect. And you can feed that to people that absolutely despise the anchovy. And they'll say, why do, why do my vegetables taste so good tonight? And you don't even have to tell them it was anchovy, but that's gonna be the backbone, that's gonna be the flavor, that's gonna be something that they just don't get at home or anywhere else. So all we do is we've got this oven up to 425, we're gonna grab this baby like this, and we're gonna whoop, slide it right in. And just for the heck of it, whoop, <laughs> Hold on, this is gonna be a little tougher. We're gonna slide this other little cornmeal pizza pie right underneath it. I'm gonna try, there's a little thermometer down there that's messing us up. Woo, that's it, that's it. And she's in. That's gonna cook beautifully. I've got my Campari spritz started. We got an unbelievable Good Friday feast going in there and for dinner, 
we're going to have a Chianti Classico. Now, I could do a whole show on Chianti, from Chianti to Chianti Classico to Chianti Classico Reserva. The Chianti Classicos have to grow in the Classico region. It grows on the side of the hill. The roots have to dig deep to try to find water, therefore bursting a huge flavored grape coming up top of the Sangiovese. The Sangiovese is one of the most beautiful, great grapes of the world. Why do I like Classico instead of Reserva? Because it's got the earth of Italy taste in it. As soon as you get that beautiful Reserva that's aged in the oak for a couple of years, it mellows it out. It makes it fine. It's a much finer wine. But if you get the Classico, the Classico will have the earth. And when these guys have the Gallonero on it, then you even know that it's even better. The Gallonero region is crazy, crazy historically, uh, has a historical story to it. And I'll give you this, the briefest one I can possibly give. How do they decide where the, Chianti, the, the Gallo Netto region is going to be? Well, that was prized territory back in the day. And so what they did was they got a horse in Siena, they got a horse in Florence, and they had a race. At sunrise, whichever one get wherever the horses meet, that's where the demarcation line is, and everybody gets that property on that side. So the Gallo Nero was a crazy rooster that they starved out of Florence, and it crowed an hour before sunrise because they let it out of its cage and it was dying for, dying for some food. And so by the rules, the, as soon as a roast, rooster crows, the horse gets a start. The rooster crowed an hour before sunrise. They took off. Whoop! There it was. Florence got twice as much land as Siena, and that became known as the Gallonetta region, which is in the Classico region, which is one of the most beautiful areas for growing some of the best Sangiovese. So there you go. Good Friday. Hope you guys are enjoying yours. Ciao for now. Ottolini Cuisini.